What is up everybody? Dan again, stocktrades.ca. Welcome back to the Stock Trades YouTube channel. In this video, I wanted to make a video based on a very popular Canadian stock right now that is considering a gigantic takeover in terms of gas stations, and that would be Alimentation Couchard. They are planning to, or at least they did plan to uh, acquire 7-Eleven, which is a Japanese-based company. And the bid was today, the bid was rejected. Uh, they said that the price just didn't come in even close to what they wanted. And as a result, Kustard is going to have to reconsider its offer, including the price. Now, full disclosure, uh, Kustard is a company we cover quite a bit over at Stock Trades Premium. If you want to join the platform, I will drop a link below. It is the best investment platform in the country. Absolutely no questions asked. So I do follow this company quite a bit. And in my opinion, they're just taking on quite you know, they might be biting off a bit more than they could chew with this offer. And I want to go over why I'm not a huge fan of it, why I don't really think Kushtard should be upping its offer right now, and realistically why they should just continue to do what they normally do, which is, you know, smaller scale acquisitions, building up more gas stations, expanding their market, but instead, they've decided to go and make this mammoth offer to 7-Eleven. Uh, they've done this before with a grocer, uh, Carry 4, I believe it was, back in 2022. The market absolutely hated it. The stock price plummeted. Eventually, the acquisition didn't go through, so the stock price recovered. But in terms of this deal, I'm just not really a fan, not because I don't think Kushtard could integrate the company into its current operations and push out some strong profits, but I just think it is way, way too big big. So the initial offering for the company was for around 6 trillion yen, which would be around 42 billion US dollars. Now, if we go to Kushtard's market cap right now, they sit at 72.86 billion. And if we look to a US dollar to Canadian conversion, we can see that 42 billion US would be around 57 billion Canadian. So you're talking, it's like more than three quarters of this company's total market cap right now. And if we head to the financial statements of Kushtard and we go to the balance sheet, we can see that the company has around 2.2 billion in cash and cash in cash and cash equivalents. So where is this going to come from? Well, it's going to come from debt and it's going to come from equity. I don't know what the mix would be. I don't know how many shares Kushtard would offer. I don't know how much long-term debt they would have to issue, but realistically, it is going to be a lot on both fronts. This company carries around $14 billion in debt. It would be safe to assume that this debt number would more than double it, again, it depends on how much they issue in terms of equity and how much they issue in terms of debt. But we can, I would almost guarantee this debt number would double. And if we go to the shares outstanding, obviously, Kushtard has been a relatively strong, you know, share buyback type company. I mean, 1.1 billion in shares outstanding in 2019. They've reduced that now to 947 million. Guaranteed, this would go up. It might go up materially, uh, depending on you know whether they want to finance a bunch of it through equity uh, relative to debt, just because of how high interest rates are right now. And if we consider the fact that Seven I rejected the offer at forty-two billion dollars, you could almost guarantee that this is going to come have to come in quite a bit higher, probably a lot higher. I mean, 7-Eleven is obviously playing from a negotiation standpoint. They say that the offer was very low. I mean, they're they're going to say this, so it depends, you know, how much higher this comes in. But the one concerning thing is, Kustard says it can increase its leverage ratio to 3.75 with no impact on its credit rating, according to executives. So as of late July, that ratio was 2.1 times. So they're not necessarily going to double their leverage ratio, but they're going to, you know, nearly double it just to make this acquisition. And yes, right now we're in an environment where interest rates are coming down. The debt might get a bit cheaper depending how this debt is structured. But Kushtard is not really operating all that well right now either, just based on the current macroeconomic environment. I mean, we look at earnings per share of 83 cents in their most recent quarter compared to 85 cents uh, the year prior. 
the first quarter of fiscal 2024, which would be the calendar year 2023. Uh, we're looking at, you know, 5.1% growth in terms of overall sales. But when we look on a same store level, uh, they're decreasing by 1.1% in the United States, 2.1% in Europe, 3.9% in Canada. Uh, merchandise gross margin is falling by 0.6%. Fuel margins are falling. This company is not operating well right now. Uh, just due to situations outside of its control, I still feel it's a very strong company. But I feel like at this point in time, making this huge of an acquisition for the company right now might not be the best. I can think of three other companies just off the top of my head. And I didn't really plan this video out at all. I just fired up the recorder and uh, shot the video because it's such recent news. So I'm just going right off the top of my head right now. I can think of three Canadian companies that made large scale, like company changing acquisitions. The first one would be Savaria who acquired Handicare. Uh, Savaria is like a mobility company, uh, access for disabled people, um, elevators, let's say wheelchair accessible vans, things like that. They acquired Handicare, which was a European company that operates in much the same environment. For them, it's worked out very well. They've done very well with the acquisition, but it effectively doubled the size of the company right when they made it. And they made it during the COVID-19 pandemic when debt was a lot cheaper. Their price, the, their stock price was very high, so issuing equity was pretty attractive at that point. The second one I can think of is OpenText, a technology company here in Canada acquiring Microfocus. This acquisition has not worked out very well whatsoever for OpenText. They took on a bunch of debt to fund the acquisition during, you know, pretty much peak pandemic. Their stock price has gotten significantly impacted since they haven't really been able to, I wouldn't say they haven't been able to integrate it all that well, but it, it really hasn't turned out all that well. I mean, interest expenses have skyrocketed for open text. They're currently paying heavily for that acquisition. It just hasn't worked out whether it works out in the future, who knows, but as of right now, it has not worked out. And then the third one I can think of is TELUS International. They bought Willow Tree, same thing during uh, not necessarily the height of the pandemic, but pretty close to the height of the pandemic. They paid a bunch of money for them. Uh, it hasn't really worked out all that well whatsoever. Sales have really slowed in that element. And, you know, TELUS International has taken an absolute thrashing. Its stock price is deep, deep, deep in the red. And taking on these material acquisitions that are such a large chunk of the business, a lot can go wrong here. I'm not necessarily saying Kustard couldn't take 7-Eleven, uh, integrate it, you know, drive strong earnings growth from it. But when you're talking about nearly doubling your leverage ratio, and obviously that probably would not cover all of the expenses. So you would have equity issuances from there. So you're diluting shares, you're taking on a ton of debt. A lot of things can go wrong with acquisitions like this, especially when you know, they're effectively nearly doubling the size of the overall company. So in my opinion, this might be a, you know, a situation where Kustard, especially when they're not operating all that well right now, just because of the slowdown in the economy is possibly biting off more than it can chew. And really, I I don't really know why this company just doesn't stick with doing what it does best. Smaller acquisitions, smaller amount of gas stations, integrate them into the fold very easily, turn out profits from it. And that is why this company has, you know, had such success in terms of generating strong returns on capital, strong returns on equity. And ultimately it's been one of the better performing stocks in Canada. So everybody, I just thought I'd drop this video on the news. Let me know if you are buying Kustard right now based on its current drawdown. Let me know what you think about this acquisition, whether it's a good idea, whether it's a bad idea, whether, you know, Japanese regulators will shut this down, whether they don't want Kustard to come in and scoop up such a large company. And as always, head down below. There's a link to join Stock Trades Premium and the No BS newsletter in the uh, description below. And I will see you next time.